everyone uh just before you start this video i got a little fact wrong i don't know why i thought it but maggie tabara thank heavens is still alive so she is somewhere good um she's 82 and from the looks of it she's going strong um genie unfortunately has passed away so yeah i did say in the following video that maggie had died she hasn't she's still going strong and may she go strong for many more many more years to come go at 82 maggie okay thank you hi everyone chrissy from footprint tarot i thought i would take a bit of a lighter turn for, for this reading um before going back to other matters and um in the intro you have been introduced to two ladies um when i was growing up i to me these two ladies were i didn't want to be one or the other i wanted to be both of them in one one was the lovely elegant and sophisticated maggie tabara who was a fashion icon a model um a, a, a magazine edit, editor a wonderful wonderful woman it's elegant sophisticated and just such presence that you stopped and you took notice of the other woman you stopped and you took notice of her too but for completely different re reasons and that woman was the wonderful absolutely gorgeous fun gregarious outrageous genie little who anyone growing up in the 70s and 80s watching her on television especially on the mike walsh show which ended a long long time ago would be familiar with her hello darlings <laughs> that's my very worst um, impersonation but i wanted to be a combination of these two women not that's not to say that Jeannie Little was not elegant and sophisticated in herself she was a catwalk model and she was a beautiful woman as well uh, she had this bursting wonderful personality that she didn't let anyone get to her and if she wanted to have a competition where you know in in conjunction with a company where you design and main dresses out of glad rubbish bag yes she did that and some of the creations were gorgeous it, it happened uh, she was unapologetic about being out there and so she didn't always have it easy and neither did maggie tabara um that um they were two icons for me when i was growing up and um I didn't want to, like I said, I didn't want to be one or the other. I wouldn't be a cross of the two. So, this is my Maggie Trabera. Nice, gleamy, sophisticated looking. Little bit of the genie here. But where I've really brought the genie out in me is with my favourite slippers. Get a load of these. Hey! <laughs> oh, can you see them? Woohoo! These are my favourite slippers. They are snuggy warm. I love them. My husband bought them for me a couple of years ago. So anyway, if you saw any mess in that camera sweep, well, hey. <laughs> anyway, what I would thought I would do for this is a, a little bit of fun reading and everything and have a door using the wonderful Vanessa cards, which you know I save for women who I admire in some way. And some oracle cards called Whispers of Healing by Angela Hartfeld and the artwork by Joseph and Wall. Wall. These have got the most beautiful colors and images and everything, Just that's just an example. And what I thought I would do is ask for each of these wonderful ladies is using an oracle card and a tarot card is the three qualities that made them who they are and they've both long since passed 
Um, every time I think of either lady, I think of admiration and and especially Jeannie. I have to say Jeannie is my favourite. I cannot help smiling whenever I think about her or talk about her. So you can see about a big grin on my face. So I'm going to pull this card down. I'll do the um, Maggie on this side and Jeannie on this side. Three cards down. Okay, so. Whoopsie Daisy. Just a wee bit too far down. Yep. Okay. So first we'll do the Whispers of Healing card. You might see on the desk behind me the two decks that I've been using for the Epstein reading. I've got Natural Light coming in on them and I've got some cleansing and healing crystal sitting on them um, you know and that's the reason why I use varying decks for varying people too I don't want you know I think if you use the same decks for the same person all the time or whatever if it's for a series of readings you want continuity and all that um, for say like the Chappaquiddick readings I did but yes yeah, mix them up and swap them around and Give them a cleanse every now and then. That, that, that's that's what I do at any any rate. Anyway, Maggie Tabera. One. Okay. Still getting used to this new setup. So we'll go through these first. Maggie Tabera, her first card. We awaken. I think Maggie was an icon of her time. She um, stepped up and she did things that women weren't normally doing at the time. Edit taking over editing a magazine. Yes, Ida Baffrose is held up as a, a, a an icon of running magazines and putting forward women's lib, especially in the 70s and all that. Maggie started in this in the 60s. Um, she did her modelling career, but she also showed that when she got married and things, you didn't have to give up everything. She didn't stop working. She it became a magazine editor and. All sorts of things and she was an inspiration she awo she reawoke in a lot of Australian women that feeling that yes they could be more than they are yes they could be glamorous and sophisticated but for themselves not for others and yes they could have more than they have even before the more iconic um, people you know women associated with women's liberation or in Australia um, to me she did a lot of people saw her as conforming to what men wanted no she was herself she dressed the way she did and did the way she, and did what she did because she wanted to do it for herself not for any bloke and she really broke that realization in a lot of women that they could do that Jeannie's first card flow that's Jeannie Jeannie she went with the flow she went along with so many outrageous things on the Mike Walsh show and this and that and she loved the ride she went with the flow she loved the ride and she didn't do it to keep things quiet and settled and you know keep the peace and things she went along with it because she loved every unexpected thing every every burst of she, she could be yeah i don't remember her ever really being crude but she went with the flow she blinked her big big eyelashes and she just went with it and and just made some situations all the better because of it maggie Taberer again her second card well-being yes maggie tabera was well known for espousing well-being and and what you could 
you know, do to, to, to help yourself and, and um, you know, promote well-being for yourself and everything. So that is, that, that's part of what made her herself too. Now we're going back over to Jeannie. I'm going from one to the other, which eats card, so that they're, you know, I'm looking at the same level with each one. Acceptance. That is so much. Jeannie accepted people for who they were, whether it was straight men who had sticks up their asses, and she was not afraid of telling them they had a stick up their ass to drag queens, to gay people, to queer folks. She just accepted them and loved them either way. Um, even if she didn't particularly like somebody or thought they were, she still took them down with an element of love. You can't, you can't find, fight somebody who uses, you know, who just emanates love. It's just, no matter how they use it, you know what I mean? And every, yeah, and she accepted people as, as they were, for who they were, and that made her it's so interesting the differences between these two ladies um, okay the last card for Maggie the last part of this section of what made her who she was listen to your body again that goes back to her she was a very very uh, big advocate for health and well-being and looking after yourself Hello, my cat just set the printer off. <laughs> yep, nothing there, of course, but yeah, she's been known to do that. You notice she's she's out and about, but she's not getting in front of everything and everything to say. Um, yeah, so anyway, she was such a huge advocate for looking after yourself, looking after your body, listening to your body, and... Um, yeah, so that's Maggie. Last card for Jeannie. And as I was saying before about just accepting everyone as they were and just, even if she didn't particularly like you, she would deal with you with love. Unconditional love. That was Jeannie Little all over and yeah I just yeah and uh, I just can't believe how these three two different sets of three cards look at how what the essence was of these ladies and to me from my memories of them and from watching clips of them it's so spot on um, now we're going to do some Vanessa cards. We're going to look at what this is the essence of what was that the base of them. Now we're going to have a look at what else about them made them who they were. Um, and I think I'll do Maggie first and then Jeannie and do the three cards for Maggie. Um, But before I do that, we'll go just recap on the three cards. Maggie, she rewoke so much in Australian women, making them realise that they, they didn't just have to look glamorous, they could be more than that. She was, well-being, mental and, and physical and emotional was so important to her and she encouraged it and she promoted it. And she promoted Looking after your body, listening to your body, being healthy. Okay? So what else made Maggie, Maggie, what else went into Maggie? The Nine of Wands. She would stand, she would defend. She often had to, I think, defend herself against not necessarily men, but against other women who thought she was selling out. 
Uh, I had vague memories of that, um, but she wasn't. But she stood and she just built up her defences and her actions showed that she was more than what men wanted to pinhole her as and what women wanted to, some women wanted to belittle her as being. She, she had her defences well and truly built up against both sides. The Ace of Coins. She took new opportunities and that's not to say she was perfect. She really took new opportunities to secure stability and financial stability, but that doesn't mean she didn't make mistakes. We all make mistakes and she was happy to own those mistakes when they came along. And, um, but she was, yeah, open to new things too, to new offers, to new, um, yeah. And I think a lot of women growing up after the war, stability was very important too. So she didn't turn her back on new opportunities to provide stability, whether it was financial or others. And she was a very, very resourceful lady. Okay, the last card, what made Maggie Maggie? Ten of, ten of coins. She built her legacy. I mean, you can still buy Maggie T clothes. Um, she built her legacy in that area that a, a lot of Australian women still carry. Um, and, you know, and... That was important to her. She took it seriously. Okay, recap on Jeannie's cards. <laughs> go with the flow. Just go along with life and enjoy the ride. Accept people for who they are. And treat people, no matter how horrible they are, with unconditional love. What else made Jeannie Little, Jeannie Little? The Knight of Queens, she was resourceful. She was careful, much more careful than she appeared. She took her time with things and she, and she really was very, very careful in the actions she took, even though she loved going with the flow. But the other side of her was as she grew up. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. She grew up in the same era that Maggie Tabera did. Excuse me. <laughs> and um, so I think a lot of people growing up in that era worked and were careful and were about investments and what they wanted to do for their future. So even though they may have looked slapdash under all the slapdashness appearance of Jenny Little, she wasn't really. But she wasn't going to hide her personality just because she had this cautious side. What else? Three of coins. This is got, because she was a fashion designer and she loved working with people. Um, and she was wonderful at working with people and that's part of what made her successful. And she was very successful. And the last card of what made Jeannie Little, Jeannie Little, the Two of Cups. She formed so many lasting friendships. And this is friendships. And, and her partnerships with people close to her. They were so important to her and she treasured them. That's interesting because that is on top of unconditional love. And the fact that she could accept people is what made her so wonderful at working with other people. 
and the fact that she could go with the flow but still be cautious. I think from my memories of these two wonderful Australian women that sums them up really really well. Um, Maggie left a legacy of health and well-being and being yourself and she took opportunities to promote it but that doesn't mean she didn't always make mistakes and she was happy to own them and she, she reawoke a lot of things in women and she wasn't afraid to defend the way she did that and how she did that. Um, that's Maggie Cabra and Jeannie Little. Prayers and love to you both wherever you are and I know that wherever both of you are it's somewhere good. Um, thank you again and love you all and I will see you at the next reading.